And I'm Anita Blanton. The judge has just sentenced pharmacist Jerome Ursland to life in prison with the possibility of parole. The May 19th robbery of Reliable Pharmacy was all caught on videotape. Two suspects came through the front door. The first man pointing a gun at employees. The second suspect, 16-year-old Antoine Parker, was not armed, according to prosecutors, but was putting on a mask. The store pharmacist retreats, grabs a pistol, and starts shooting, hitting Antoine Parker once in the head. The pharmacist, Jerome Ursland, then chases the armed robber down the street, firing two more shots. Approximately 15 seconds later, he comes back inside, walks past Antoine Parker, who prosecutors say was lying unconscious on the floor with a bullet wound to his head. Jerome Ursland grabs another gun, according to prosecutors, walks up to Antoine and shoots him five times in the abdomen. Right now, Ursland's attorney, Irvin Box, is trying to get the current judge, Ray Elliott, kicked off the case. Tonight, the judge in the reliable pharmacy murder case steps down. Well, Paul and Jessica, no one will say exactly why the judge is removing herself from this case, but we can tell you this will most likely push back Jerome Ursland's trial for some time. It was scheduled to start in just two weeks. Now there's no telling when or if it will happen at all. This video contains the interview of a pharmacist who shot two armed burglars. Jerome Ursland had hoped for a peaceful job when he began to work part-time at a local pharmacy. He had injuries and PTSD from his time serving in the military and needed an environment that wouldn't require much stress or physical activity. The job itself wasn't the problem. It was what the pharmacy contained. Many of the medications made it a prime location for a robbery, and that is exactly what happened on May 28th 2009, when teenagers Antoine Parker and Javantia Ingram entered the pharmacy with guns. Fearing for the other workers, Erslin drew his own weapon and fired multiple times, striking both boys. But I also had a pharmacy degree, so the Air Force let me get in, and, and so I finished up in the Air in Force, because okay. they needed pharmacists so bad they were willing to take me. Wow. So that's how I finished up my 20. Okay. Yeah. And, and you're working as pharmacist here yes, at the sir, store? Yes, sir, part-time. Okay. I can't work full-time because I can't stand to stand up that long. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. pretty painful. Okay. Um, what time did you start work today? Did you come in in the morning? Yes, sir. Uh, I started work. Uh, I got there at 20 minutes until 9. Okay. I got there at 8.40. And then the person with the key came at 8.50, and then we opened the store at 9 o'clock. Ursland is relaxed and unbothered by the shooting. This is most likely because of his military experience, which will cause his reactions to differ from an ordinary civilian who has never been in this type of situation. Okay. And that's when it usually opens, 9 o'clock? Yes, sir. Okay. It always opens at nine, six days a week. Okay. Um, and then when this happened, it was getting ready to be closing time. Is that yes, right? Sir. It was about six o'clock. Here's what happened. Okay. It was um, it was uh, ten minutes till six. Okay. And um, what we do see, our store has been hit many times with burglars burglaries and then it had an armed robbery a year ago but the other pharmacist was on and then they the the three uh, black men beat beat them up and stole their wallets and their money and all the narcotics so since then we take the narcotics off the shelf and we put it he got a great big safe and every night at the same time we move the narcotics and put them in the safe so if a burglar comes in because uh, i mean it was bad they had like eight burglaries in a year oh, okay so uh, but only one armed robber. Pharmacies are often the targets of burglaries, and in most cases, the medications are more sought after than whatever money may be in the register. Right now on my Patreon page, you can watch the interrogation of a suspect who killed a man and then tried to run over a police officer while trying to escape. Watch him burst into tears during his interrogation, thinking it may help him get away with it. Watch this video and many more right now at patreon.com backslash Stranger Stories Plus.
robbery and so um, we lock them up in there and then that way when we had a burglar get in and and uh, he couldn't find anything we saw him on a picture and then on a video cam and he he was looking for stuff and he couldn't find anything but anyway <laughs> what, all locked up huh? yeah what was happening was uh -huh. uh, we were getting ready to lock up and i i had some narcotics in my hand and then uh, the girls were uh, uh, Jean, the older lady, and the okay. other one is named Megan, and that's her daughter. Okay. And is so, this you three? Yeah, just okay. us three. So, you know, we weren't real secure. So, uh, all of a sudden, it was like a, was like an unreal thing. I, I was, I had this, and I was behind the counter, and all of a sudden, I saw these two black guys with gray mask and that was like I don't believe that and then and then they had guns and uh, it was like unbelievable and then the uh, they said uh, I excuse the language but it's anyway okay. uh, I'm sure you heard it before but the ladies were right by the register and they said I want all your money and all your drugs and so I had told them if anything like that ever happened to go into the back and I would take care of it and so they went to the back but then the guys got real mad because they didn't get it and they started shooting and so they shot and uh, I backed up and it, I hit my back where it would hurt it more and then I got grazed right here but it's it's cleaned up now they please cleaned it up and okay. bandaged it and so uh, they got two shots off at me and then I reached in my drawer and I grabbed out my uh, Keltec and I grabbed now I grabbed my Keltec out of my pocket and then I grabbed my judge out of the uh, where I keep it and I had the judge with one shotgun shell, one forty-five long coat, one shotgun shell, like that. Mm -hmm. And so then, and then they said, he's got a gun. And so uh, they continued to fire and then I started firing and I took the one on the left and I shot him. And then the other, the other guy ran out of the store and uh, this one, I I ran by him, and he was he was still up there, and he was gonna hit me as I went by. So of course, I would have been a goner because with all this, and so I had the Keltec, so I just unloaded it on him, and then he fell down, and then I chased the other guy out, uh, and I all I had left was I had my the a judge but it only had I think three shots left because I think I shot the other guy with with it too uh, because he was the closest to me but I ran around the corner and then we got around to the corner of the store and there was a, another black guy and he was in a Oldsmobile a white Oldsmobile and the left the left uh, rear uh, hubcap was missing okay. and he had on a green a green hooded uh, uh, you know like a running suit he had on a green hooded thing and he had a shotgun and he started to pull it up and I pointed this at his head and he got down and that other guy was running over there to get in and that guy says I'm getting the out of here and so that guy continued to run and then I went ahead and unloaded on him as he took off and uh, uh, the clothes that the guy that ran off and unfortunately he got away was Parker and Ingram were brought to the pharmacy by two older men who told him that they had to commit the robbery gang members often do this to minors because the sentence will be less severe than if they committed the crime themselves. Uh, he had on solid, solid red 
jogging pants. He had on running shoes. He had on a white shirt. And he had on a gray large mask that covered his entire face. And then he had a revolver. Okay. And of course the guy that... Uh, that I nailed, well, he was oddly dressed pretty much the same, but he didn't. Erzland is referring to Parker, who fell to the ground after being struck by the first bullet. He is, instead of solid red, he had red with spots, uh, spot colors on him. And then he also had on a white top. And the, the odd thing is the masks were made by the same person because they were both gray and they both covered the entire head. So I don't know what they look like. And the right. guy that was waiting to pick them up with the money and the narcotics that was parked over there and the one that took off, I don't know what he looked like because he ducked down when he saw that I had him the beat on him and he didn't he didn't have a chance. I saw the shotgun, it looked to be a 12 and he was pulling it up and it looked to be a short one like a Mossberg 500 or a Maverick and as he was pulling it up and I pulled down on him and then he got away, but I can't tell you what he looked like okay. because he 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 ducked down because he uh, he thought I was gonna get him, okay. but I he wasn't uh, I wasn't scared he was gonna get it up in time, and so that other guy I wanted to get him before he hurt anybody else. Okay. The one that run away, and I used my last shot when he jumped over a hedge, but unfortunately my last shot was a shotgun uh, out of the judge, and so it wouldn't go that far. Okay. So he probably has pepper, a four shot, he probably has little pepper shots on him, and it's all. the back as he's running? Yeah, it okay. was his back. Then the guy in the, the car, where was he at? On the corner right there, 50? Yes, sir. He was at okay. the corner, and he was there with the motor running. Was he parked? He was side? parked, and he had his motor running on the cor almost to the corner. Which way was he facing? He was facing... Towards Penn? He was Penn. Okay. He was, and he took a ride on Penn. At real fast, he took a ride. Turn, turn north on Penn? Yes. Yeah. Is that right? Yes, north. Okay. And he ducked down, and he wasn't even looking. You know, the cars, the cars screeched around because uh, he wasn't looking, you know. Okay. And when he's sitting in the driver's seat, and he's bringing the shotgun up to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Because um, he was parked. Parked, okay. That's how he did that. So it was obvious he was waiting for them to come out. Did, yes, sir. Did, did one guy ever run over to that car, or he just yes, he ran across, he ran across the the grass, and he ran over to the car. But the car, the car, uh, I was back here, and he was running across to get in the car. But the car took off before he got to it. So this guy was up the creek. So he turned from going this way to going that okay. way. Because he, that guy left him behind. Was it a? It was a white four door car. You think? It was a white four door Oldsmobile model eighty eight, approximately a nineteen eighty eight. It was a junky. So it was an older car. Yes, it was a junky old car, approximately eighty eight. It was a large car. Ersland was able to observe quite a few details showing just how long the incident took. This length of time worked against him in court because the jury found it difficult to believe he was still in danger after the initial shots. And, uh, and he was missing the rear hubcap. You see yes, the, the left rear hubcap. Okay. Was there anything else that stood out about it? It had a muffler that was kind of loud. It had holes in it, it sounded like. Was there anybody else in the car that you could tell, or was it just that one guy? Just the one, one guy. guy. So it was a three-person robbery like the other one they had. Okay. Was it a bright white, or was it a... No. Kind of a silver, no, maybe? Or? No, it was dull. Okay. 
Okay. It hadn't been washed or anything, and its paint job was bad. Okay. It was definitely a white? Yes. Okay. And then you didn't see that car again? No, sir. Okay. I, what I did then was I went in to, and called the 911. Okay. The guy in the red shirt that's running jumps over the hedge? Yes. What, what's the last place you see him? Did you just see him running down the street? Yes. The last place I see him is when he runs over the hedge, and I'm out of ammo, so I run in to call the police to tell him his location okay. because I couldn't do anything. I can't run because I'm right. crippled. Right. So, uh, but he's running the last thing you he's see. He's running like the wind. Okay. And so he, uh, I go in and tell him which direction and where he's at and which way he's headed. Okay. So you call 911? Immediately. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, when when this all starts and they let the guys, are you back there in that north part of the pharmacy or are you up there with the girls? No. I'm over in, I'm right in the middle of the dispensing area. Okay. So the girls are up front by the cash register and like, and I'm over here right in the middle of the middle of the dispensing area. Okay. The big but, tall area yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm right in the, in the middle and I've got my hands with full of one of the narcotic boxes because we have five narcotic boxes and I had one of them in my hand okay. and then these guys come in. And then did did you see him come in? Uh, I didn't see him okay. come in. The first I saw him was when they started. When I see these people with gray mask and they're jump, they're cursing and they start shooting. And that's the first time I see him. They're okay. already shooting at me. I thought, oh gosh, I can't get to my gun in the time. But they miss me. But are both of them shooting at you? Yeah. Both of them have a gun. Yes. They both. One of them. They both shot me, and they shot high. Okay. Could you tell that, what kind of guns they had? Yeah. Uh, they uh, were. They looked to be like cheap revolvers. Okay. Both of them imported. Have... Yeah. Okay. I would say imported, and I would say they were, from the sound of them. They were 38 or 357s. Okay. Were they, they black or silver? Okay. They were both black. Both black. And both okay. black. Yeah. Okay. And the people were all three black. Okay. But as soon as they come in, they and then you see them, they fire off yeah. a couple of rounds at you. Yeah. All of, all of a sudden they're shooting, and I I see all of this happening at once, and I I I fell back against the against one of the bays and hit hit my back and hurt it worse. Okay. And then I by then I had pulled out the Keltec and then I shot the one guy with it left handed and then I got time to get to my good gun and uh where was the guy at that you shot when, when you shot he him? was in the uh, by the cash register. Okay, by the front cash register as you yes, come sir. in. Okay. He was right by it. And the other guy was in the corner the corner uh behind the cash register in the corner. And he was gonna come around this side and get me and this guy was gonna come around this side. Okay, so they're both kinda of coming around that yeah, register there to get they're, in. They're coming around each way to get me like that. Because oh, okay. I'm their only threat. Okay. And I'm the one that they figure's got the narcotics and knows where the money is. Right. And so they're just they just figure they'll get me like they do all the other pharmacists in town. They go get the pharmacist and beat them up, and they get their money and the narcotics. And right. that's what they were planned to do. I'm sure. Okay. I'm positive. That sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. Could they both come around there? And you get that guy, and he goes down. He went down. And then the guy that's in the red shirt's coming around the other way. Right. What what happens? You fire off. Fire I some fire rounds at him. him, and then he gets scared and runs out. Okay. Does he have to push the button to get out, or is it the door just open for him? Well, that is odd. How did he get out? Somehow, it, he, somehow he just bust busted out of it. Uh, is there like a maybe a latch there that he can push to get out, or? I don't know how he got out. Okay, that's fine. I'm I just don't curious. know how he got out, but he got out immediately. Okay. 
I don't know how he got out. I was worried about the other guy because he was still, he was still a danger to me. So that's why I had to get him with the Caltech uh, as I was running out. Okay. Okay. So, but he he goes down. How many times do you think yeah. you shoot at this guy that goes down? Probably five. Okay. And but then, he kept staying up. Okay. And I was afraid he was going to get the girls. He was right. step, staying up. So I they went around that way back to the back office. Yeah, they okay. went to the, they didn't go to the back office. They went to the back, the very back, which is, but there's a refrigerator and they went in the back room. Okay. So that's the, uh, the best place. So nobody went in the, the boss's the, the, office. The middle office there. No, yeah. that's where they got put before. So okay. they didn't want any part of that office. Okay. Let me see if this is my partner calling from. Hang on just a second. Sure. Hello? Yes. Sorry about that. They're trying hey, to find okay, uh, sir. trying to figure out the video part of it out there. I guess Blake's the one who knows how to do that. Oh. Maybe but, so. Okay. Um let's see, we were talking about you you shot at this guy that went down about five times. How how many times do you think you shot at this other guy? Four. Four times in the store? Uh, no, four. Uh, two outside. And then? No, three outside and one in the store. Okay. And that's from, you're using the kill tech on this guy? Yeah. And then you're using the judge on this guy? Yeah, on the guy. One other guy. Okay, so all together, how many rounds do you think, just so we can get a count of? Okay, I shot six kill techs and four judges. Erzland had time to switch weapons, which was another point that the prosecution used against him. Ingram was fleeing and Parker was on the ground, so they were no longer a threat. Okay. Ten shots. And what was the, what caliber is the Caltech? The Caltech is a, is a 380. Okay. And of course the judge is a 410 slash 45 long coat. So you shot four of those, so ten total. And then how many times do you think they shot at you, you said? Two. Two, I think. Each shot two or just two total? I think two total. Two total, okay. It could be more, I don't know. You just remember two, though. For, okay, yeah. that's fine. Okay. Um... Can you just, I guess you really didn't get a good look at the guy in the red shirt, other than he had on a red shirt. Just a solid red shirt? Uh, the one that, the one that got away. Right. He had on, he didn't have on a red shirt at all. Oh, that's it right. It was you, a white shirt. Okay. And he had on red pants that were solid. The okay. white, the shirt was white solid. Okay, that's the one you told me about before. Yeah. Okay. And then the one in the car had on a green... He had on a green hooded uh, running top. Okay, like a sweatshirt kind of... Yeah, it was okay. a sweatshirt. Okay. okay, and then once you come back in and call 911, do you go back and get the girls out, bring them out, or how does Yeah, that... I went to them. I didn't know they were all right. And so I get, I get them out. Okay, went to check on them and then bring them. Yeah, I found out they were all right. Okay. Because I was afraid they were shot. Right, okay. And so, because as soon as this starts happening, they all, they run. see, and... I, since these guys were on me, I didn't know where the girls went, and I figured they went to the other office. Okay. And uh, I hunted for them, and then I found them back there hiding in the back. Okay. They were hiding back there still. And then you got crazed on your left arm? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else you can think of? Or? Oh, sir, that's all I got. Okay. I wish I, the other guy wouldn't have got away. If, I guess really you never see him other than with a mask on, so you couldn't, you don't know really what he looks like. Right? No, I could tell their, their ages were, they were in their, they were approximately, I would say 28 from their voices and
One of the men was a friend of Ingram's mother. Uh, let me just stop it. Uh, okay. Okay, and you, and you think it was just those three? You don't think there's anybody else probably involved that you I don't think tell. so. There, now, there could have been somebody laying in the back seat of the car, okay. but... Uh, no other cars parked around? I didn't see anybody. Did you see the guy that was running down the road? Did you see him get picked up later on? Didn't, okay, because you're no, about to No, but I, could, I went right back in because I had wanted to see if the girls were all right. Okay, I understand. But I went right back in. Yeah, okay. Okay. You never saw the white car again? No. Okay. It went off north on Pennsylvania. Okay. And these guys you didn't recognize from maybe of coming in earlier that day or anything, so like casing it out or anything? Okay. No. Uh, we have people that walk back and forth sometimes, and they and I think they're take, you know, casing the joint. Mm -hmm. And uh, whoever it was, well, the guys, they, I believe they had cased the joint because they knew when to hit us, when our money was out, see, our money was all out, and the narcotics were all out. So whoever, uh, the people, those guys, they knew what time what we time did everything. Okay, so they, they had a pretty good idea of what was they going on. They had good intel. Okay, okay, okay. Let me go call my partner out there and see if we're about done out there. See if there's anything okay. he wants to ask. Okay. Uh, I, I don't. You had to do what you had to do. Uh, I know. Now they're shooting at you. Um, I hate that, but I had to because I didn't want the girls to get killed. Right. And I didn't want to get shot. And just from what everybody I've talked to said, I don't see any problems. It's good. Self-defense. I mean, they're shooting at you. You did what you had to do. Let me ask you, what okay. happens if I get these? these people's families and they start suing me is there anybody here i can call to get advice that what what will happen is we're going to get all this information together we're going to make yeah. all these reports taking pictures we got csi out there we'll get all this together and we'll take it over to the district attorney's office he'll look at it and he'll say yes this was self-defense okay that he won't file charges that's that's not going to happen then okay so then that, that would kind of clear you then from say it's like a, it was a homicide or something like that yeah. i'm not saying that's what it is but that's yeah. he's going to say that no this was a case of self-defense but he's the only one that can do that we just have to go over and present the case to him and once okay. that happens we'll call and let you know okay. um are all of your guns still there in the pharmacy okay we'll probably take those for now but we'll get them back to you as soon as we can and that's fine keep them as long as you want okay well we'll try to get ballistics will probably do some things to him some tests you know fire off some rounds and then we'll get them back to you. Okay, okay. that's great. Um, we're not going to keep them forever. I don't want oh, you to think right. that. We'll, we'll give them back to you. Um, but that's kind of what's going to happen as far as the families and stuff. I mean, they can always sue you. That's something. But, you know, there's going to be a, total, a full investigation on it. And the district attorney is going to look at it. So they're not going to be able to say, you know, civilly they can. But criminally, there's not going to, you know, there won't be anything criminal if, once the DA is done with it. Right, I but, understand. But, but people can sue anybody for anything nowadays. You know? They that's, can. I know. Yeah, that's it's pitiful. Uh, and, and that's a possibility. I mean, I, I don't really know what to tell you on that. But I know. You know, once we get our investigation and stuff done, that's only going to help you. Yeah. Okay. And okay. I did do just what I had to do. So it's not a deal where you have a big choice. Right, right. Yeah, and I don't want you to think that we're we're doing this because we're going to try to you know, put charges no, on it or something like that. I don't think that at all. You're on my side, and uh, we just you're have just to get doing you know. Job. Right. He he ended up dying because of what he did, and we have to kind of investigate that. Like I said, and then we take it to the district attorney's office. Of course. So I just want to let you know that's what's happening. We're not. I appreciate. It. Okay. okay. Um, let me go call him. Do you want to drink water or anything? You okay? I'm okay. Okay. Do you want to sit in here? Or you want to go sit in the hallway? Either way is fine. Uh, I'll. Go sit in the hallway. Okay, that's fine. All right. Yeah, some people don't like sitting in here. It's kind of claustrophobic. I just to them. need to stand up. God sure. Uh, that and I think we're still as rough from my surgery. I just want to make sure we're okay, and then we'll get you out. Although officers believe this to be a case of self-defense, the judge would not so easily be convinced. Jerome Ursland was found guilty of first-degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison in 2022. At the age of 71, Ursland was transferred to a medical facility.
he will not be eligible for parole until he is 98. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, there is a Patreon link in the description where you can support the channel further. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.